Okay, uh, my name is Christina Stanchuka. I am uh, at the moment coaching in uh, Kent for Kent Crusaders and I'm coaching the junior side, boys and girls, under 12s and under 14 girls. I initially um, start playing basketball because I was watching people play on the streets. I start basketball quite late um, and uh, I just enjoy that feeling that it gave me when I was little, like the freedom to go on the court and not overthink things or like think about things outside sport and the discipline and friendship. Um, and uh, despite the fact that I didn't play too much in Romania because after I reached the 20s, there was not a lot for females. Um, I just loved it. I wanted to give back because of the coaches and the influence I had uh, there. And um, I loved it. I loved that. I you know I, I belong to something that makes sense, particularly when you're like young and you're like that teenage teenager and you're a bit lost in like the fact that I belong to a team and I had that family around that made me feel secure at that that stage so I, I wanted to give that back and support other other children or children in that situation and just you know give back to the sports I love by just sharing those feelings and um, those values that I learned. I think um, that I didn't really want it to coach so I had to actually pick on the guy that um, got me involved to start on and um, I came as an au pair in 2007 in the UK and I just wanted to go back and play and I'd done my ACL and um, he said well you're not going to play for a while now so what about if you coach and I went in with him to a, into a session just to see how it is and like I just loved how he gave back to the little kids and the passion they had and I, that made me go you know I can do this and I think the biggest influence is um, my PE teacher back in my hometown like he was the kindest person ever and like unselfish up to a sort of fault I think too nice um so he was my I think the top of the influencer that made me realize I want to do this in long term um I think the biggest challenges for me was um I would like to pick on the language to start because when I first started and Ipswich gave me that first opportunity to to coach, I spoke so quick that I now think back and I don't think the kids understood what I was saying. And um, I think the first challenge was to, to kind of um, learn the terminology and be able to express it so you are, um, you know, listened by by the same time, understood by the ones that you spoke to. And then the biggest challenge that I faced recently is the I think the opportunities and the male egos that make sense. The, the people in higher, has got higher, power, higher jobs than me, and I think I, I don't, I think I've, I think my challenge was the fear of change, and I resisted to those changes, and I, I've learned to adjust to that and to to be more open-minded to it. So I think those are my bigger challenge, biggest challenges for the last few years, I suppose. Um, Nick J once said to me, he was, uh, he was the one that tutored me for my level two, that uh, I think one of my strengthy things that I, now I agree with him is that it doesn't matter my failures and how many times I, I you know, hit the floor hard, I always stand up and keep going and I'm resilient like that and now that I think, think about it, that is my main strength, I'm resilient, uh, I'm committed, I, you know, I've learned from my mistakes and I keep going and gosh, I made some mistakes. I think my last one is, um, and I'm very proud of it because I progress in the in the pathway. I I went from being a apprentice coach, what they're called then, to an assistant coach, to a team manager. Then at the end, I was the the, the lead head coach of national under 15 girls. And the last cycle we had, um, we won third place. And since I've been involved, it was a tough competition in Copenhagen. We never got to top five. And winning the third place in the pathway for me was, I think, my proudest moment as a coach, as a as a female coach, to be honest, until that moment, an aspiring coach. I thought that's such an amazing achievement for 
for myself and but, but for the program and the girls as well that they can actually compete and succeed at that level if you know they commit to this journey and I was so proud of the group and I'm still proud of seeing them uh, grow in their next journey and I think I'm proud of every single one of them that in some of them they still stay in touch and call me coach and that's that's a that's a moment to be proud and anyone that you coach in the past comes hey coach how are you um so yeah that i think that's my uh, my proudest moment at the moment that i can pick on i think first one is not to give up because it's easy to give up because you get intimidated uh you get nervous i think if you're passionate you want to achieve those I don't know if I should call them status, but like, you know, you want to go into those environments, you want to achieve it and you want to go be a lead coach and, you know, or assistant coach in this project. You just need to understand that is, is, it's tough. You know, you have to be resilient. You, you don't, you don't give up. You don't have fear of asking questions or, you know, don't be shy. I think that's the thing. You were too shy in asking questions and we decide to just be quiet in the corner and just say, oh, next time is our turn. But, if you don't take the opportunity when it comes, then you will miss out and then you'll regret. So um, I just say never give up and keep going at it because your turn will come. Um, I, th there's a there's very interesting here because we I can talk to coaches about this, but I come from a from a different culture. I never had to be told to compete. <laughs> I never had to be told to dive on the loose ball, maybe because I was a bit wild and I was little and I was boyish. But the toughest thing for me, um, sometimes is to teach this kid to compete, the want to compete, the desire to have that fire in your gut to like go after it and like give 100%. Um, so I, sometimes I struggle because I, I feel that that's given from where I'm coming from. But I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> learning how to cope with that a bit better. Um, so yeah, for me is that, I just feel like, we're missing a little bit of fire, particularly on the girl side, so yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to pick, um, if we talk to one of my under-14s when I first started, <laughs> I think I was Coach Carter but into a, a female version, so I have to actually put my hand up, Coach Carter inspired me to the core because he made so many, many changes in those kids' life and I wanted to be that coach. Um, so the suicides were my favourite at that point. Um, uh, I loved it just because of the mission and the message that he, that, that movie uh, transparent gave to people if they've seen it with the right lenses, I suppose. Um, I think the book um, that inspired me is um, is Stand Up. It's about a female coach that, um, again, she had to deal with a lot of... Um, I got to say full bags because of the opportunities that weren't there and she was dealing with an environment that was male dominated. Right, so I had the opportunity to go to Euros under Karen Burton's leadership and um, till then I thought I'm quite a lively coach on the sideline going up and down till we face Montenegro and I think all our bench stopped coaching because we turned around, the, the game was neck and neck and this little coach, bold I remember, he was now on the floor, on his, on his stomach, hitting the ball and having a tantrum like a baby and I was, I was like, I was supposed to take stats so I actually lost it, I was just like, I was like, and Karen goes, did you guys see that? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> And I, I thought that's the funniest thing I ever came across in the basketball, basketball game or basketball environment. Um, gosh, um, I just think I like to be remember as passionate and the coach dot was there for them on and off the court. Um, and I don't want to uh, play my own talk here, but I have now family friends that are the family of the players I coach and the player I coach. Um, and um, the other the other months, I think we had that exercise to ask people how they see us, how they perceive us. And one of the players said, just the coach that was always there for me on and off the court. And I think that's how I would like to be remembered, that person that was there for them. I like both. I use, I use my voice and my whistle. And I think sometimes I use my whistle as a funny way or, uh, when I'm really angry, I use my voice. 
Um, so I combined the bike. I like the whistle around my neck. I feel like something that I'm proud of by the same time because I say to the kids, you have to use your voice. I can't abuse the whistle. So I'm I'm combining both because they have to be used to both in a in into a game environment. 